Hi, my name is Mayela Almazan, and in this video I'm going to share the technique um, you need to use to draw your family tree before a session with me, whether it is um, a session in person or a session online. All my contact details are here in case you have any questions on which to book an appointment. So let's just get started with how to draw your family tree. First, we need basic information. We need a full name of the people, the members in the tree, including your middle name. Also worth the, uh, noting when uh, somebody has changed their name or has deviated from the costume. I am a very good example of this because I did not take my husband's name, for instance, so I kept my maiden name. Uh, you could make a note of that if there's such a case in your family tree. We need a way to distinguish in the diagram between men and women, so we will uh, indicate when a member is a man by using a triangle and always putting them on the left hand side by using a circle when it's a woman in your tree, placing them on the right hand side in the case of marriages. And in order to distinguish who you are in the tree, we will mark it with a square around your circle or your triangle, whether you're a man or a woman. In this case, I'm a woman, so I create a circle and put a square around. And that's me. Third is writing down dates of birth, death of marriage. I do not need the years. Um, I just need the day when you have it and the month. So for instance, the 22nd of March, when somebody dies, I just mark with a little cross that the person died on the 1st of May. And if possible at all, I need you to bring me information for um, up to the fourth generation on both father and mother side. If you do not have access to this information because you were adopted or any other reason, it does not matter. But if you do have it, try and go as back as the fourth generation, please. Something to keep in mind uh, whenever you're creating your family tree is never erase. Uh, whether you're writing with a pencil or pen, just cross the stuff out and uh, make a note on the side, but don't erase because this in itself is information for me. I'm going to next describe the basic relationships and how to mark them in a family tree. Um, like I said, men go on the left-hand side, women go on the right-hand side. This is a couple, and that's how we mark this. If the couple is married, we're going to um, do a double line to mark this as a marriage. This means that people were together, but they were not formally married, either by church or whatever the custom is in your country. If the couple were separated, we're going to cross this line with one cross, if the couple was divorced, this should have had two lines, uh, we're going to cross it like this, indicating the divorce. So just separated but not divorced, and this is with legal divorce in place. The next part is the men template. I have incorporated some of the things I've already explained to this um, diagram already. Keeping the man, uh, this will be um, John, and the woman in the, in the marriage, Susan, on the right hand side. I have incorporated their names. The surname is uh, self-explanatory from the beginning. Mark has died, so I give his death, um, the date of his death, 1st of May. And so has Susan, so I indicate both birth and death dates. They were married on the 14th of November, and they had one, two, three children who lived, but they also had two abortions where well, it doesn't matter the origin of the abortion or the cause of the abortion we need to mark them too so if you know for instance uh, in this case uh, susan and john lost two babies between their son um, david and their son peter we do not know much about this baby but we know perhaps that this baby died around the beginning of may sometime and so I note this down, as well as, say, my brother David um, was born, my brother Peter, who's uh, uh, passed away, I mark with a cross. And this is me, say, I'm Mary Jane, and this is my birth date. We're going to continue with a more complex example of our family tree. We have our, um, the main person, this is me for instance, Mary Louise, with my um, date of birth and my siblings, 
I have marked that there have been two abortions between my brother David and my brother Peter, but I don't know anything much about them, so I just leave them as an asterisk or a star. I have marked that my dad John was born on the 3rd of November, died on the 1st of May. I marked that my parents were married with the double line um, uniting them. And I'm marking that they were born on, they were, sorry, they got married on the 14th of November. I'm going to talk about this part now with my mom's um, lineage, Sarah Mary. And I'm only going to emphasize on uh, extra information you can give me. Sarah Mary's parents, that is my grandparents, were married on the 17th of May, for instance. And I'm marking that there was one, two, three, four, five children who were alive and two abortions. I am marking that my grandma on my mother's side was called Jane Mary with her dates here. And the extra addition we are putting here is these numbers one and two. These are extra clarifications that I need if you have this information about your family tree. For instance, I'm going to say that this um, brother of Sarah Mary, my uncle, who was the last one, the, the youngest one in the family because this will be the oldest child in the family and this will be the youngest child in the family. I'm marking here that this uncle of mine um, died in a car accident age 12 and this is to do with the extra information if you have of your family tree which I will finish this uh, video with and I'm also marking for instance something important that my grandma Jane Mary when she married this man my grandfather, this was her second marriage. So things like this, you can note down elsewhere in your uh, information sheet for me. And I'm also writing that Jane Mary was second marriage to this grandfather because she was a widow from the first marriage. Okay, um, I was talking earlier about the clarifications that you can annotate on the side of your family tree. And I gave the examples of this man here who died in a car accident at age 12. And the fact that this grandma, Mary Louise's grandma, was married in second marriage to this guy here. So what sort of issues do we need to mark or annotate on the side of our tree? Things to note down are the abortions. Remember, we mark them with a star or an asterisk and any, any further detail if we know. Um, cases of infertility, repeated infertility cases in your family tree, sudden deaths by accidents or suicides. Any cases of bankruptcy, if the issue that you want to work with me is to do with money. Um, any members of your tree with alcohol or other addictions um, that you know of, please also note that down. Any members of your family tree who have been disabled also need to be marked down as special cases. And finally, coincidences <laughs> or repetitions. So for instance, we have an example of uh, two people, somebody dies and maybe three or 10 years later, somebody is born on the same day that the person died, somebody else in the tree died. And other coincidences that are worth noting are, for instance, whenever we have something like three generations of women in your tree with breast cancer or with a particular ailment or illness, those are all things that are worth noting down. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions, you can um, email me um, or visit my webpage for more information. Thank you very much.